Hey guys, well welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution show. I've got a special another review show. Uh, here I've got a brand new 2019 Jaguar I-Pace. Fantastic vehicle. I want to say thanks to Jaguar Canada for lending me this vehicle for a few days. Just up front, uh, there's no compensation or anything that has been given to me by Jaguar. They've just allowed me to use this. It's one of their media fleet cars and I was able to spend a few days driving it and well, folks, it's a, it's a fantastic car. The last time I was able to drive the Jaguar Pace was just for a short time on a closed circuit track when they did their media launch back at the latter part of last year. So here I've been able to actually spend about three or four quality days driving this around and actually did a nice trip to Ottawa in it and back uh, put over a thousand kilometers. So really been able to, to get a good sense for what this car is all about. And you know, right off the top, I mean, I'll go through good and bad and ugly aspects of it. There really is much on the negative side, but I do have a few things that I've pointed out. But, you know, for a premium vehicle that competes with the Teslas, that complete, uh, competes with Mercedes and all the high-end cars, it really is a fantastic ve vehicle. It has a just a superior ride and handling aspects to it. Um, you know, nice big tires. It's very comfortable, absorbs all the road bumps that uh, the roads will throw at it very, very nicely. You know, it, it, it rides like it's on rails. And for a car that's as heavy as this with, with a 90 kilowatt hour battery system, it's a very heavy vehicle. Um, the acceleration is just rocket fast. You know, certainly going to give a, 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 a uh, upgraded Tesla Model S and X a run for its money. And you can look at acceleration times on the web. But the thing I wanted to focus on with this car is the build quality and the fit and finish. It's just absolutely superb. And that's what Jaguar is all about, right? Giving a quality product to their customers and to people that want to, that are love brand and that want to stay with the brand and go electrification. So the interior, the detail to interior workmanship and design is very, very top. And the materials that they use are just high-end, beautiful materials. Now this is a black car with a black interior, but there are many different options that you can get for the I-Pace to get mixed different colors and different tones uh, to personalize the vehicle as much as you want. Other things that I found very, very nice in this vehicle are the seats. They are not only a top quality in, in the way that they're put together, but they're extremely comfortable. Um, as I mentioned, I put over a thousand kilometers already on this vehicle with some long four or five hour driving uh, uh, runs with a couple of breaks in between. But at no time did I ever get uncomfortable in these seats. There, there's uh, the, both the front driver and the front passenger have multi-position power controls for uh, navigating the seat to your personal preferences. They also have built-in seat heaters, that is everything does, and seat coolers. This is my first time in a car that actually has seat coolers in the front and they worked very well. One of the days coming back got a little warm and it was nice to be able to cool the seat down. So they are very, very comfy seats and great for long term. Well, hey guys, I'm in the uh, 2020 or 2019, I guess, Jaguar. Jaguar I-Pace and uh, on my way to Ottawa so I'm just going to document uh, some of the stops that I have to do and uh, I'm going to have to do one charging for sure maybe two um, right now I've got 350 sorry 382 kilometers to my destination and uh, the, the GOM is showing 302 kilometers so I'm definitely going to have to charge I mapped out two charging points uh, so I'm most likely going to have to stop for about half an hour at each of them to uh, charge um, and see how it goes but I will document that and uh, let's see how it goes all right, so here I am on the highway. I'm trying out the uh, uh, Jaguar's version of, e of the um, ProPilot, I guess. I'm trying to remember what it's called. I'll, I'll flash it up on the screen here. Basically, the autonomous driving. So I have it set for the, uh, uh, the automatic cruise control, uh, which keeps the distance now. And uh, I've got lane assist on. I'm just waiting for it actually to pick up a lane. There it goes. So uh, the green light comes on in the dash, as you can see, when it picks up a lane. Now, here we come to a bridge. And watch which a little bit something's going to be funny here. All right, so in this case, it didn't do it. The last couple of times I went under a bridge with this running, it actually started to, it actually did a veering like that kind of thing where it, uh, where it veered just very slightly. I don't know if it was a shadowing from the bridge or what, but it was slightly, 
sunnier just a few moments ago, even though it's a cloudy day, it was just slightly um, less dark than it is now. So I'm wondering if the shadow had something to do with it. What I can say is it does a really good job of lane keeping. Now here it's, it's deciding I don't need to go right, so I'm just gonna go straight. That's pretty good um, because in Pro Pilot it actually would have started veering right. Um, when you have it on a, the, um, the autonomy uh, driving right now. I'm just barely gripping the steering wheel, just trying to just to keep that alarm from, uh, from not sounding every uh, oh, 30 seconds or so. So I'm just lightly uh, got the steering wheel, but I'm letting the car drive itself. Um, so as you can see, it does a really good job of lane keeping. It's very smooth. There's no ping-ponging or any of that effect. It, it's probably, I would say, even slightly better than Nissan's Pro Pilot, but ever so slightly. Um, as you can see on the screen, it's showing that the um, steering assist is uh, is enabled by the green steering wheel on the lower left side there. Um, I've got cruise control set at 102 kilometers an hour here on the highway. Uh, that warning comes up about every 15 to 30 seconds. I haven't timed it. It's letting me know that um, i got to put my hands on the, the wheel. It's a torque sensor. Um, the display is very nice and vibrant. It's got a nice easy to read display. I've got it set for my trip here. Um, and then the uh, infotainment system here is set for the radio, so uh, I just turned the volume down so I don't have YouTube yelling at me about uh, playing music, but uh, uh, this is the, the screen. Um, I actually had the HUD on when I got picked up the car, the uh, heads-up display was on. I, I turned it off. I wasn't a big fan of it. In this case, as you can see, the lane assist went off and it started to veer left. Um, didn't really know which way I was going. Let's see if it picks up the line again. Uh, yeah, and it just did. Now, one thing I, I have it, now I don't know if there's a setting for this, but when the lane assist activates again, it doesn't chime or anything. It just kind of, the light goes on. In the Pro Pilot, actually, there's a chime that, that, that uh, occurs, uh, an audible warning to let you know when the uh, lane assist has activated and when it gets deactivated as well. And in this vehicle, there, it makes no sound. So that's one thing I would like to see. If I don't find it in menu settings, um, I will have to, that's something I'd like to see uh, on the on this vehicle. I'm still getting used to all the controls. There's so many buttons uh, and controls, both soft and hard on here that I have to, uh, have to figure it out. Uh, but I'll have more commentary coming up on that. I, I just wanted to show how it also to get navigates very slight curves. I've been in this uh, uh, a few degree turn for a couple for about 10 seconds or so. It actually handled it very well, even with an exit lane. Uh, one thing I did notice off the bat, just from a cockpit per, uh, viewpoint, is the rearview mirror here is uh, not that big, and I don't know if you can see the amount of space that it gives you. Um, but uh, there's not a whole lot of rear room, uh, rear visibility through the rear view mirror um, because you've got the high back seats there. And uh, uh, I mean, you can see, and it's also got, I think, uh, tinted uh, aspect to it. So um, just something that takes some getting used to, uh, like everything, but uh, it's, you do, there are some fairly visible blind spots here that you are going to rely both on technology, instrumentation, to alert you if you're uh, changing lanes, uh, blind spot monitoring, all that stuff, and also visual shoulder checking. You're going to make sure you need to uh, do that in this vehicle because there are some fairly significant blind spots. Just something to gauge uh, the noise here. I'm doing 102, and it's a very, very quiet cabin, a very minimal wind noise. Now, I'm fortunate that this road is uh, relatively newer, uh, only paved uh, within the last year or so, so it hasn't really seen a lot of winters yet to degrade it, so it's nice and smooth and quiet. Um, and I guess the tires that are running here are fairly quiet. Um, one thing I don't hear is a lot of, a lot or if any whine noise from the acceleration or the deceleration from both uh, using the energy and regenerative bra uh, regenerative uh, braking. I don't hear anything like I do in my Nissan with everything off. I can hear a little bit. Um, this car is really quiet when it comes to any motor noise, uh, electric motor noise. I don't hear anything. It is a nice quiet cabin. Um, the seats are very comfortable. And, um, you know, it's definitely roomy enough. I'll probably still adjust the seat at some point a little bit more as I continue on my uh, four-hour road trip here um, uh, for today. But uh, just wanted to comment on the cabin. Now, another feature that I use quite a lot when I'm on driving, especially on the longer trips, is the sound system. And all I can say is, wow, it's a fantastic sound system. It's an immersive sound feel to it. I would have it cranked and I'm, 
driving at a nice uh, clip on the highway, bopping to the music, to my favorite tunes, and it's just a wonderful sound system. Uh, there's no noise coming from this vehicle. Obviously, it's an electric vehicle, so it's very, very quiet. The only noise you hear is road noise from the tires making contact with the road and, you know, and things that might be on the road. For going at some highway speeds, and I was able to get up over 100 kilometers an hour, 105, 110 kilometers an hour, different stretches, it maintains a very quiet nature to the interior of the vehicle. Uh, wind noise is, if it's there, I didn't, I didn't hear it, and I drove on, on the first day was fairly windy when I hit the road, so it manages noise quite well. Now let me talk about the displays, and here I'll run through some of the different display settings, but to summary, the displays offer excellent visibility. You can change the appearance and you can mix up controls. It's a fully digital cockpit, so you can change what you want to see, what information is provided, and how you want that look. The choice of data is a lot. Um, I know initially when the iPaces came out, there was some lagginess to the um, software, so the infotainment systems and the, and the cluster were a little bit lackadaisical. Now they seem to have improved that greatly because it's much more snappy. I do find sometimes when I engage a certain control, it might take a split second or so to actually change a screen or to start that process. So it's not exactly snappy, but it's much better than it used to be. Um, and uh, again, this is something you know, that's very minor that you most likely won't notice. It doesn't impact the nav as you're moving or anything like that. It's a very responsive navigation unit. Now, safety features are always uh, abundant in electric vehicles and the Jaguar I-PACE is no slouch when it comes to that. Of course, it has your automated cruise control, it has your lane keeping uh, capabilities, it has your level three autonomy type capabilities of, of driving the vehicle. And I found that they worked very well. Um, again, it's something that I would use pr primarily in long distance highway driving. And back to the interior for a sec, as far as roominess, uh, it's, they offer lots of room in this vehicle. Certainly four very large adults can be very comfortable in this vehicle. Five in a pinch, the middle seat as always for most sedan vehicles, even though this is a hatchback, um, the middle seat is always a bit narrower for getting somebody, that fifth person, but you can certainly do this. I know that, that you know, this car has been classified as a potentially an SUV, a crossover utility vehicle. I just see it as a, as a, as a, a four-door sedan that happens to have a hatch. I wouldn't even classify this as a, as a crossover vehicle. Only you could add that category because it is height adjustable and you can adjust this vehicle up and down a couple of inches depending on your, your needs uh, during winter or if you're going slightly off-road. Now Jaguar has taken this and there are media, you can Google that. You can see this car going on some pretty rough terrain uh, in some of the other uh, countries where they launched this vehicle and they were doing some media events. So it has the capability to actually do some pretty phenomenal stuff. But for normal everyday driving, there's a very good amount of room in this vehicle in the interior uh, and passengers are very pleasantly uh, uh, seated and very comfortable in the rear. Of course, from a power per outlet perspective, there's I think five or six different USB ports and both 12 volt powers and different uh, associated power plugs. So everybody can, can charge up when you're on the road uh, for this vehicle. Panoramic roofs are now popular with most high-end vehicles. They come standard in Teslas, of course, and many other vehicles. The I-PACE is no exception, has a wonderful roof line, a wonderful panoramic roof. Um, today is a fairly sunny day and I drove an even more clear sun and there's no heat that, that is felt through that roof. So the UV protection is extremely high, as, as is the tint. So it keeps you comfortable, yet gives you that open airiness in the interior. So I've had a day already to spend uh, driving in this uh, new I-PACE. Base. Done about 500 kilometers, and, my, and I'm on my way back to the Ontario, the Toronto area, back home. And um, just give you a quick update on my sense. Um, I mean, again, this car's fit and finish is is fantastic. There's nothing loose, no rattles, no squeaks. Everything is is put together very nicely. The appointments in here are very nice. Um, I do find some of the controls a little tough to get used to. Uh, especially like the HVAC, it's not as clear, as concise as I'd like it to be. But all in all, after I've played around with the uh, control, um, it, it's getting easier to understand. I mean, I only got the car yesterday. But from a driving sense, 
it's a very smooth car. It's very quiet. It handles the, the road noise very well. I don't get a lot of wind noise. The steering is very responsive. I've got it set on eco mode. I'm not going to try the other modes because there are videos that show zero to 60s and, and passing. I've had, I've had extremely no problems passing anybody on these two lane highways where I, where I need to. It's got plenty of speed. But just from a drive uh, quality, it's a very, very nice interior. It's a uh, very, uh, very firm drive, but not overly firm. It handles the, the uh, road situations very well, whether it's bumps or cracks or potholes, uh, different things, different types of pavement. Uh, obviously, tires have a lot to do with that. Um, I played around with all the screens, and there's so many different variances that it'll drive you crazy on what you want. So there's, there's lots of information here uh, as far as what you want from uh, in, uh, information as far as the infotainment goes but uh, it just takes a little while to sort everything out uh, you know I talked about the, the the Jaguar driving assist yesterday so I won't get into that but just you know my overall sense is it's a very put together extremely well car very well appointed um, lovely interior I'll be taking my family out in this uh, in the next couple of days so I'll get their opinions of how the back seat is and the roominess but um, you know, other than all the fancy buttons, the memory, you know, it's got memory, uh, three different memory settings for your uh, front seats here for the driver and passenger, which is great. That's one thing I wish the Leaf had for the price point was at least one memory setting. Uh, most of the time I'm driving the car, but my wife, when my wife gets in, she moves everything and it takes me a while to figure out where everything is back. Uh, so these type of luxurious appointments, uh, you know, make the car that much better. Is it worth $100,000? This is a $106,000 car, this car that I'm driving. Well, if you want luxurious appointments, um, if you want to stay in the Jaguar name, it's got a good size boot, um, uh, certainly not an SUV by any stretch of the imagination, but will hold four comfortably, five, no problem, albeit uh, maybe a little jammed in the middle, but very comfortable. Uh, if that's what you want, this is the car for you. Also, one thing I liked about this, especially for long distance driving, is the, is the wider foot wells uh, for the front. One thing I noticed about some of the more compact cars is because they bring the wheel, uh, the wheelbase shorter, you have the wheel well intrusion into the, into the underneath of the front dash on both sides. And from a driver, it tends to narrow the foot room. Well, here, there's less intrusion, almost nil. So I have a lot more uh, wider foot well for resting your, your feet, uh, especially the left leg when you're driving down. It would be opposite, obviously, for the right-hand drive vehicles in the UK and other countries. Uh, but a very good amount of space there. Now the power trunk is standard for high-end luxuries, uh, trunk release, this is no exception. So let me get to some of the points that I thought were kind of so-so on this vehicle, especially for, for the vehicle that's priced over $100,000 here in Canada. The outward visibility is good. It does seem a bit narrower because of the a uh, little bit more squished down windows, even though it's got the nice roof line, especially in the back. Uh, it is a bit more squished down for me. And one thing I did notice is the, the B pillar is pretty thick inside. So if you are shoulder checking, uh, it, it's a little challenging sometimes to get a good visibility behind you when you're shoulder checking, but you can do it, but it just, it's a little, a little thicker than some of the other vehicles with uh, the B pillar. And the C pillar as well is fairly thick. Uh, so visibility is okay. I would have liked it to be better, but I can tell you in the few days that I've been driving this, I've had no issues in, in not being able to see somebody. Uh, the, the very big side mirrors offer a lot of view from the rear as well and from the sides. And one thing I did notice is driving on the highway is there is a bit of glare that comes from the dash that you can see uh, reflected into the front windshield as you can see by this picture here. One other thing I would like to see on a vehicle of this class when you open the, the rear hatch either through uh, your key fob or through a switch in the vehicle um, when it opens or closes it doesn't make any audible sound. Now a lot of hatches especially in more SUVs do make a beep beep beeping or some sort of audible sound when they're opening and closing. This doesn't, it's pretty quiet. Um, I just think as an extra safety feature it would be nice to have an audible sound. Now, I love the HVAC system in, the, uh, in this new I-Pace, however, the controls are a little funky, I'll, I'll say that. It took me quite some time to figure it out, um, and even today I'm still pressing and, and turning the wrong things half the time. I think over time you'll obviously get to know your systems, but it is something that I think they could have designed slightly better. So in that 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, efficiencies are something that people are talking about. I was able to get decent range, but certainly compared to a Tesla or some of the other models that are out there, especially, uh, especially Tesla, uh, for that size, you would expect a bit more range. Now, 
this is, you know, 350, 370 kilometers of EPA rated range is more than enough for most daily driving, probably 99% of the needs. But when you are doing that long distance driving, it is nice to have a little bit more if you can for the size of the battery. So this is a heavier car. It has a good aerodynamic efficiency to it. However, with the big grill and the heavier weight to it, the efficiencies aren't as good as it could be for a 90 kilowatt hour. But Jaguar owners are looking for cars that uh, handle very, very well, that offer superior rides and luxurious appointments, and this car does deliver on all that. One other aspect that I experienced during my Chargers, uh, as I mentioned, I did a long road trip, uh, was it, there's no indication of charging speeds or the, the amount of charge that you're receiving uh, when you do plug into a fast charger. I, I couldn't find anything on the screens that told me how much um, kilowatts I was receiving into the vehicle, um, which is something I would like to see. A lot of other EVs have that information. This doesn't. And one other small aspect uh, that kind of bothered me is getting in and out of the vehicle. I found that my foot tended to hit the, the, the inside lip. So I mentioned good and bad and ugly, folks. Well, from an ugly, really there's nothing ugly about this vehicle. I think it's a beautiful, eye-catching vehicle. I think that the folks at Jaguar sculpted this to be something that will turn heads, that will get people looking at it, yet will be functional and, and performance oriented. And this does not, um, it does not detract from any of that. It gives you that and more in spades. It is a phenomenally handling vehicle. The ride is superb. The performance is outstanding. It's got more power than I would ever need, to be honest with you folks. And it's just a fantastic car. Some people maybe don't like the design, but I think it's beautiful. The lines flow very nice. Um, and it's a very, very planted car. As I mentioned, it rides on rails and offers just superb quality that you would expect from the folks at Jaguar. So that's my wrap up. I uh, hope you like this impressions of, my, of the Jaguar I-Pace. There's lots of videos out there, folks. So I'm just trying to give you my two cents from being able to spend a few days and actually driving it and just getting, getting into the everyday mode of a vehicle. Because after all, you want to get in these EVs and drive them, not just look at them and have them plugged in all the time. And this, this offers all that and much more. Uh, list price on these cars start at just under, uh, under 100,000 Canadian and go up from there. I know you can add a lot of options to these vehicles to really customize it and make it your own there. So it's definitely a pick uh, for a, a fantastic EV that has a very high-end build quality backed by a great warranty and by a great company. So Jaguar, you've done an excellent job for your first kick at the can from an electrified vehicle and I'm looking forward to seeing what more comes from your brand. And that's it, folks. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Thanks for watching this episode. Uh, you know how to reach me for my contact information. So until the next show, everybody, please take care, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.